This is Leadership in Action, and I'm Casey Cheshire. Join me as we delve deep into the passions, expertise, and experiences of Boston area innovators. Sponsored by the Boston chapter of the Entrepreneurs Organization, this is Leadership in Action. There it is. We get to hit record and the fun begins. I'm excited. I can't wait to introduce our guest today. She's an entrepreneur, an inventor, a leader in the luxury goods and jewelry and industry and, and all sorts of specialties we're going to get into. Semi-finalist, the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award, uh, featured in shows like NBC, The Today Show, founder of The Mat, founder and CEO of Tiny Tags, Melissa Clayton. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Happy to be yeah. here. Uh, I'm so glad you're here. This is going to be really fun. I can't wait to get into this. But let's start the show off the way we start every show. And that is with this question, what is a common misconception around leadership, running a business and being an entrepreneur? For me, that myth is that I work a hundred hour weeks and that I run around very stressed out all the time. And for me, I think part of my journey, and I can only speak to my journey, is that that's not true because I've never looked at this business as a means to an end. We never took outside investors, which I think also helps, and have always been very comfortable in enjoying the process and the journey of it and not willing to sacrifice my life for the business. And most things usually come up from your childhood, right? My dad was an entrepreneur and worked insane amount of hours. And I distinctly remember saying to him, like begging him to come home when I was a young girl. And I knew that was not a life I wanted for my children. And I, my famous quote is no one ever said on their deathbed, I wish I spent more time at the office. So for me, I embrace the journey of the business. I love it. I, I might not be in the office 100 hours a week. Am I thinking about it at my kid's soccer game or lacrosse game? Absolutely. But <laughs> yeah. I am at least watching the game. <laughs> right. You're watching the game. And, yes. And, hey, if the, line, if the mind wanders, because, you know, maybe that little, that, that kick of the soccer ball reminded you about the kick you want to do for that program and, you know, like how our minds work. But, right, so your mind might be on a topic like that, but you are not stuck in that, that, to find office space you're out there living it up absolutely my son last night we had you know we're hitting mother's day right now and it was seven o'clock the boys were off doing their thing my kids are older so they're at practice and all that and my 14 year old said hey mom you want to do something i thought he was leaving for practice and i was in the middle of an email and i like shut that computer and i said yeah what do you want to do and we went and played pool so when your kid asks you to hang out when they're 14 and you're, a, you're the mother um I always want to be able to say yes. So that, uh, that to me is very important. Isn't there that old classic song of like dad wanted to play catch and the kids like, no, and then now the kids like want to play catch and their kids are saying no. And it's like, no, it's yes. this terrible circle. So it's like you experienced that at an early age and you just decided to reject that notion all, you know, you know still be an entrepreneur sounds like, but at the same time, you know, not sacrificing all those other things that are most important. Where do you suppose that myth comes from? Where do you suppose that? Well, I, mean, I guess it's not a myth for some people or just a myth that you have to be doing that to be successful. Yeah. And I want to recognize, you know, that I was in a position that, you know, when I started this business, my husband was the breadwinner. He was putting the food on the table. So I want to recognize if you are a single parent that you might not have that choice to work a hundred hour a week. So I absolutely get that it's sort of a luxury that I had someone putting food on the table when I decide to start the business. My husband now join, has joined Tiny Tags and has been five years. But I also think, you know, part of how we operate as a, as a couple, as a family is, you know, very aware of the how easy it is to want more. When I convinced him to quit his job, and he was you know, very concerned that obviously that was a huge risk to take, that we would have just the business would be providing for our family. And I said to him, what more do you want? You know, we have a home, a modest home. Uh, we have you know, modest cars. We have a Ford. You know, we don't drive fancy cars. And I was like, what more do you want? And I just think it's very easy to feel like wanting more and more and more. And I always say, and again, I think a lot of this comes from seeing my own father, is that you know there used to be that bumper sticker that said the guy with the the person with the most toy wins, 
you know, do you remember that bumper sticker? I absolutely remember. And that I said, it's really the guy with the most time wins. And for me, that is the most precious thing. It is time with people I love, time with my business. I love this business. It is my heart and soul. It's my mission. It's everything to me. But I'm, I'm not on this quest to accumulate more stuff. Um, and I'm okay growing slowly so that I can enjoy it. Yeah. Did they have, there was some study several years ago where they looked at a certain amount of either income or whatnot. And it was definitely a, a, a curve. And it, when you got to a certain point in income, it, it was a marginal increase in happiness. Right. Where it was like, you know, if, if it's too low, you're right. You're, you're on the struggle bus and you got to get it to a certain point and every bit helps. But then you get to a certain point. I, I don't remember the number. I think it was, it wasn't very high. It was surprising. It was something like 120, right. You know, for even a household. Right. So it wasn't, it didn't, it wasn't some ludicrous amount. And then that you found happiness. It was like, actually anything beyond this, just, it, you know, probably just to your point takes away from your time to, to marginally add to your toys. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all want financial security, right? That yeah. to me is the name of the game, financial security and putting a value on that. So being able to rest your head at night, knowing if one of you lost your job, that you had money in the bank. So I think financial security versus accumulation of stuff. Um, I think there's a big difference there. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of, a lot of us around here and I certainly feel this way too. I much more appreciate experiences than objects. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, I love that you're, you're sort of breaking out of the trap and the, the thing that you said around, it's very easy to want more. Why is that? Because I just remember a little kid, you know, and you're feeding them. And I remember teaching even our kids how to say more in sign language. So before right. they, could even, they could even talk, they knew how to ask for more if they wanted more pudding or whatever it was, right? What is it about us that, that drives us to want more if we're not careful? Probably very good marketing out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. So, yeah, you know, and I, I spend a lot of time, like the things I enjoy reading are, you know, Eckhart Tolle. I, one of my favorite books is the, is the Gift of Joy, which was a conversation with the Dalai Lama and Arch Desmond Tutu. And, you know, I say to my kids and I say to, I, I remind myself, I won't act like I don't fall trapped to it, is that joy, oh, yeah. is, an, joy is an inside job. And as easy as it is to say like, oh, I really want to redo this. So I wish I had that. And to remember that true joy is inside us and within all of us um, and not outside of us. Yeah. And then, and then there's also a cost to that, you know, to your point, um, you know, sometimes I, I'm driving by the local airport and I see private jet landing and I'm always like, that's my jet, right? <laughs> kind of just put a, putting it out there. But at the same time, I've also had that thought in my mind that, um, I could totally do it, but what would I sacrifice? And is it worth it to me? And so far it hasn't been worth it to me, but the idea of, yeah, yeah, you, you could have no more wife, you know, see your kids a third the time and, and be on your jet. And then I had a, a good friend actually tell me that the seats aren't actually very comfortable on private jets usually. Yeah. So, you know, so I was like, okay, maybe I don't need that. It's more of a, wouldn't that be me? So I just like airplanes in general. Right. Yep. And I, and honestly, it's like, even I always say my husband, I talk, he's from upstate New York, you know, his parents have been in the same house for 50 years. Oh yeah. And, you know, even if we could afford that, would you really want to raise your kids that they're on a private jet? And, you know, there, our goal with our boys is salt of the earth kids. They know what a hard yep. day's work is. They see us working. And I just don't think you do your kids any good with excess like that. No, I mean, look at the TV, right? No, yeah. it kills them. It like yeah. literally... Well, unfortunately, but also just their character just gets murdered, Yeah, you know? So you're right. So I, it's like, okay, you can have it, but you can't fly your family on it because you don't want to spoil them yes. uh, and ruin them. You know, it's like, it's like flying international first once on an upgrade and then you can never sit and coach again. Cause you're like, wait, where, where's my port? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So in the time in not taking the 80 hours, so the grind, it, does, does it not take the 80 hours or do you just choose not to, to do it? What's the thought on the time restriction? Sure. I mean, I think you could probably make the argument if I did work a hundred hour work week, that we would be bigger than we are today. Absolutely. I, sure. I know the more I work, the better we do. There's a deaf correlation, but I think I have never looked at this business as a means to an end and I'm okay that we go slow. I mean, we're, this is my 15th year. 
Um, you know, the first seven years were the mom on the kitchen counter, the kids were napping, you know, my husband would take them to the park on the weekends and I would work. Absolutely. If I worked a 50 hour work week back then, we would be in a different position today, potentially, but I'm willing, I wasn't willing to take that risk. So I think being okay, going slow is for me has worked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I love the idea of the intentional control of that switch too. Like maybe sometimes you need to turn it up and you know, you're sacrificing a few things like the park visits, but then other times you're like, okay, now it's time to ratchet it down because we got to where I want to be at. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my boys have a, have a lacrosse game at four o'clock today. There's no email. There's no Instagram post that would stop me from being there. I could tell you that. So. Right. No, certainly no podcast. So we'll make sure we're done by four. Yes. <laughs> I think, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. It's like the AM right now. So I, we should be good. Um, yeah. Um, wow. What, how, how have you done this? Was it just because of the experience growing up and not wanting that or what advice would you give to people, recommendations, best practices? How do you encourage other people to be able to accomplish this and not, you know, or just accomplish this? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it's surrounding yourself with really good people, with a team, you know, we're still a small team. We are hiring um, our 10th employee on Monday is starting. Um, but we have a team that we can rely on that yeah. I don't have to be here to make sure that something gets done. And it still blows my mind. You know, we have two amazing customer service women and it amazes me. Like I haven't heard from them in like two weeks and we're into mother's uh -huh. day and I know that they're doing their job and that we could trust our team. So, and empowering your team to, you know, deal with situations as, as they might arise so that you're not constantly in demand. Um, you know, and as EO says, you know, working on your business, not in your business, I really have taken that to heart. Yeah. And, and you tied it up perfectly by saying it, you're not constantly on demand. It, you're not, I think sometimes we can subconsciously build ourselves into it because that makes I know in the past, I've certainly done this where it's something about you feel important, you feel needed, but then the goal is actually to make yourself not needed. Right. That's, that's the ultimate goal, but then it's a weird place to be in because then you're like, well, what do I'm doing? What am I doing here? And then there's right. growth things for you to do, but until you make that connection, you might subtly have yourself in meetings that maybe you don't need to be in anymore. Yep. No, absolutely. Yeah. Well, what, what's up? What's coming up in the uh, the future that really excites you? Any think any changes that are happening? Sure, we just launched in Pottery Barn Kids. Oh um, wow! Which is you know for us feels very you know a milestone for sure. An iconic brand, obviously publicly traded. It's been you know, a part of the Williams and Sonoma family. It's a brand that I grew up you know going through the catalog before there was online when I, when my son was born. So to be part of that family and the oh, potential yeah. to be part of what their customers get to experience when they're looking for gifts or they're registering for their baby shower is pretty, is pretty amazing. And we're really working on distribution this year. That's our big, um, our big push. We feel like our brand is solid. Our product is solid. We know who we are and we know who we're not. So now it's how do we get more people to know about tiny tags? So looking at third party, you know, right now we sell Nordstrom online. Um, you know, we launched in Pottery Barn Kids. We're also in talks with P in the Pod. Um, dabbling in Amazon. I had always thought that we would never do Amazon, but I'm recognizing that there is potential there. There are there opportunities. So we are we're looking at a few select pieces to potentially put on Amazon. Oh, that's cool. I'll have to connect you. I have a friend named Nick who, who just absorbs Amazon stuff and is yeah. like a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Our, um, the, that my product, the mat is on Amazon and it is pretty amazing how it, we do very, very little with the mat and Amazon just from its algorithm and it's done really well there just sends it to people and they buy it and it's crazy. So. Yeah, another friend was sharing how his his cogs his his costs are low. He actually makes more money if he sells something on on Amazon than if he handles it himself. Even you know. Yeah. 
Well, the shipping crazy. rates are insane. So oh, the mat no. is the, the mat is is pretty heavy. So it costs us almost. We have to ship it for priority. So it's almost eight bucks. Oh, geez. when Amazon ships it, we get to ship twenty five at a time to an Amazon an Amazon warehouse. We get their shipping cost. It's ten dollars to ship twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what you, that's nuts. How, what's it's like twenty five cents? <laughs> uh, it's incredible. How do you? I don't, yeah, math is hard, but like, yeah, yeah that's that's a t- fraction of of shipping one of them. That's insane. Yeah, yeah it's that's insane. so crazy. Yeah, what, what is the mat? So the mat was an invention. Again, I I'm a, I think the queen of the slow the slow go is I had always had a small bathroom living in Boston and wherever I lived, and was just tired of putting my makeup and my hair dryer and the, my straightener around the edges of the sink on the toilet bowl because I had no counter space. So the mat is a foldable collapsible mat that folds up to the size of an iPad. But when you unfold it, it lays over your bathroom sink to create an instant counter. It is crazy practical. I use mine every single day and I get ready pretty quick. And it just solves a universal problem, quite frankly. And, uh, you know, we got onto Shark Tank last year, which was our big what? Uh, you were on Shark Tank? Yeah, so that did was you, very exciting. Did they air your air, air your episode? They did. And what? That, that's the tricky part is that, you know, you can tape and then not air. So talk right. about how much inventory do you order? So luckily we did air and it was a great experience. We did a deal on on air with Lori Grenier in what? real life. It did not happen, which was fine. Um, oh, right, because you can make it, but then... You have all yeah. the due diligence and discovery. Exactly. And- yep. Interesting. So anyway, but it was great and it's a fun product. Um, really, my 17-year-old son is the one that's um I have trying to groom him to be in charge of it. Um, it's not perfect. He I'm like, did you check the customer service tickets today? So um, but it's it's uh it's been a little bit of a labor of love. It's actually it was harder than the mat because. We had to get a patent on it. And that was expensive. That was a lot of upfront costs. Managing inventory with tiny tags. Um, you know, all of our stuff is made here in Rhode Island. Well, it's, you know, we're in Mass, but it's in Rhode Island. And everything is custom done pretty much. So we don't really have to carry a lot of inventory. So the mat, um, I feel people when they talk about inventory and sitting yeah. on the water for weeks and months at a time so yeah well did you did you sort of stock up on inventory for the shark tank because i'm sure we you did got we bought notice. eight thousand units um so you know but you, you sold, sold or you, you bought we bought eight thousand units we sold out of everything we had pretty much and then we were out of stock and then we ordered um so i think when the show aired we had about eight thousand units so we did like one hundred thirty thousand in sales that month um, wow. that it aired, but then we ordered more and that took forever. So you kind of lose a lot of momentum when you run out yeah. of stock. So, yeah. But and that's tough because you don't want to, you don't want to buy too much. Oh and, yeah. And did on it. And, and then, and then the show doesn't air. Oh, and then it doesn't air. Yeah. Oh so my how does gosh. It, yeah. So it's not, not easy. So what was it like? Tell me about what was the experience like being on the shark tank? It was pretty crazy. We had a quarantine. Well, I did out in Vegas for nine days because it was in the middle of COVID. Oh, so yeah. I, it, it aired last it, April. It aired in April 2021. I taped September of 2020. So I had to go to Vegas. They put us up in the gorgeous. I put me up in a gorgeous room. All of all the contestants. And what hotel? The Venetian. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful room. Beautiful room. They treated us incredible. And you literally didn't leave your room. You couldn't even go down the hallway to get ice. You had to like stay in your room, which to me for was nine days for nine days. I was like, I can't do it. And then I was like, all right, Missy, you got to do this. And it was actually so, a football season had just started. So I was actually got to watch a lot of football. And okay. was it um, a it good was incredibly room though? It, hopefully it was like a bigger room because otherwise you're almost it, in a cell at that point. It was like almost, you know, massive king size bed with the, okay. with the whole like, um, you know, living room area. It was gorgeous. So did you go with your gorgeous. husband at least? No, no. no. You, Only the solo. Oh my yeah. gosh. So you get a lot of work done. <laughs> I did. I did. I got a lot of work done. So it's good. <laughs> And yeah, and it was incredibly nerve wracking as anyone would imagine. And it's, you know, it's not, you don't start and stop. It's you walk out there, you're out there for a lot longer than you see on the show because they edit yeah. it. And it was very nerve wracking. Okay, so yeah, over. did you walk, you, so tell me what, you walked down that corridor 
you walk down the corridor and then you actually, they have you stand and wait like 20 seconds as they get this footage of you standing there. And then you go into your spiel and, you know, Mr. Wonderful hated it, hated the mat. And I just, <laughs> but I had talked to enough people that I knew to ignore him. So I totally ignored him. Yeah. And I just really tried to focus on um, get, talking to Lori. I thought she would be interested. Kendra Scott was the guest judge. And I don't okay. know if you know who Kendra Scott is, but she's in the jewelry world and has created oh. an empire. Um, so I would, I wish because, because of COVID, we, there was really no interaction outside after the show stopped air taping. Oh, really? So you don't get yeah, a chance were, to like do a little chit chat or anything, just whatever were, is. Yeah, they were very, very strict with COVID because it was still the height of COVID. You know, there was no uh, vaccine know, yet. But you've been, so you've it been was, in a freaking prison for nine days. Yeah, yeah. It was oh, very, wow. it was all business. All business, yeah. Okay, uh, and I haven't seen your episode yet, but this definitely makes me, and what we'll do is we'll link to it in the show notes. Um, so you, you get out there, you do your spiel, and you ignore Mr. Wonderful. So he didn't yeah. do any of those like crazy, like, well, I'll tell you what, I'll you know, $10 until I make back my money. Like one of those BS offers or anything like that. You just, he basically said out. I would take this product and burn it in my barn. And I did just, he really I, say that? Yes. And I said, well, you know what? The over a thousand reviews we have on Amazon of four and five stars would disagree with you. And then I totally ignored him the rest of the time. Yeah. <laughs> so. well, yeah. He is, he's there. Like we know you're here for the TV factor, Mr. Wonderful. So moving on, uh, <laughs> It, it was uh, was Mark. Did, did was anyone out? And then how did it go with Lori? How did that work? And how did it feel to be doing that? I felt such a sense of oh my gosh, I'm finally here and finally getting it over with. It was a very big sense of relief. Mark Cuban was very gracious, very kind. I didn't expect he likes technology. He didn't want to yeah, do oh, the totally. tchotchke. And Lori was interested and I thought to be honest, I thought she'd be way more interested than she was because I think the mat solves a universal problem. And I, she finally, she, I was asking for $100,000 for 20%. And she came back, she wanted 33%, I think it was. And I was, I tried to negotiate. And then I was like, fine, <laughs> you can have 33%. And then once all the due diligence went on after they said, you know, they were very gracious and said, you know, we think we're going to hold off right now. Interesting. Yeah. And I've, I've heard that there is that middle step so they can do whatever they want for TV. And then, so really there is no guarantee at all, whatever they talk about in that room, because it could all fall apart. Exactly. For any reason. Yep. Hmm. TV. You never know what you're, yep. you're watching. It's a reality you know? show. <laughs> it's a reality show for sure. Uh, yeah. Let's do this deal. Let's, let's do it together. But then it's like, yeah, no. And uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. The, to go from 20% to 33%. That still sounds reasonable. Um, had you watched the show before? Because I've always seen people come in and I'm dying to ask you this question because I've seen people come in and ask for the most outlandish things like, oh, uh, you know, a million dollars for 5%. And they're like, so you're, you're valuing your company at like $20 million? Like, is, what's your revenue? Like, oh, I've yeah. sold four, you know? So yeah, I thought, our, I thought it was very, we were at doing like 120,000 in revenue, I think. So we valued it at, you know, 500,000, which I thought was reasonable. Um, but she said, no. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. More. And so you have to show them like all the records and everything, and then they can decide to back out later on. Exactly. For whatever reason. Yeah. Hopefully they're not trying to go make their own right now. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what an experience. Um, you know, would, what would you do differently if you did shark tank again, or would you do it again? I would absolutely do it again. Um, nothing. Okay. I, I was, I was happy, maybe change my outfit, but I was pretty happy with how it all went. <laughs> right. Um, yes. Oh, that's great though. That's great. It sounds like you were intentional and you planned it out and you had it all figured out. Not like some of the people I see on that show where you're like, well, how do they let you in? And you realize it's a TV show. You know? Right. Exactly. Wow. That's great. I, so I, I guess the, the Kevin Bacon circle of, of people connections has, has, has gone one more now you've you've met did you even get to meet them or you just like you wave at them because covid yeah, everyone's scared because of covid it was they were very very cautious so got it got it well we're done that thankfully hopefully yep. yes oh, man um so we got, that was a mat that was a long mat story but that was so cool that was really interesting um are you inventing anything else 
Yeah. Is that br- Inventor <laughs> yeah. Brain still going or is that like? No, I think right for Tiny Tags, trying to come up with new designs is keeping me um, busy enough. So yeah, no more inventions. What was that process like going from invention idea to actually having it fabricated in China or wherever? And Yeah, very, very, very slow. Yeah. And because I was really building tiny tags, I was, you know, tiny tags has always been the focus. Okay. Gotcha. And so I would pick up the mat, put it down, pick it up, get an email, try to get a sample, you know, cut open the sample, may change what the inside was. You know, we did not want to go to China, but we had no choice. So yeah. it was a very, very slow process. Got it. And so, and you invented tiny tags as well. Or yeah, so or... Tiny Tags is so what is I that? And kind of tell everyone what that oh, is. Oh, sure. So Tiny Tags, we do, we're an online business. We do fine personalized jewelry for moms. Everything is made here in Rhode Island. And it is my heart and soul. I can't believe it's been 15 years. Wow. We have this incredible community of moms. We share their stories of our community whether it is stories of having twins that were two pounds to dealing with infertility, to postpartum, to celebrating grandmothers on their 80th birthday and they have 20 grandchildren. So really just the entire journey of motherhood from new moms to grandmothers, godmothers. And it's just been such an um, beyond, something I never could have dreamt of, to be honest, of how much it's given back to me and how much I've grown with the business. You know, I was talking yesterday, you know, when I first started the business, it was really, I was this young mom, just over the moon of having a child. And you feel like you're the first person to ever have a child and just wanted to wear his name on a necklace and never thought I was gonna leave corporate America. And I had decided to leave corporate America and started playing around with trying to make a piece of jewelry and finally got it made. And that was how the business was for the first five, seven years. A mom, I had three boys. I would do it at nap times, weekends. Then we were living on the West coast. We moved back to new England and that my kids were older and I knew I really wanted to make fine jewelry and make it this forever piece that women would want to wear with a little black mm-hmm. dress as much as they'd wear with jeans. Yeah. And at that time Etsy was coming out. So this very hand stamped, made in the basement look was everywhere. So I was glad that we switched to laser engraving and Mm. really came up with an entirely new collection, a new product line. And that's what we've been, as you would see today on our website. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now and so many different versions have, what was the first one? The first one was just a sterling silver, a little half inch circle with with your son's name on it. And what's so special about tiny tags because now, you know, when I first started, there was not a lot of personal jewelry companies. Now there's quite yeah. a few, but we do laser engraving, which allows us to do back engraving. So on a lot of our products, almost probably I'd say 80%, there's a back to it. So oh. it's one of, whenever I talk to dads, I'm like, don't miss this opportunity to not only put your kids' names on the front, but put your wedding date on the back, put your anniversary date, tell her that you love her because it is that little private message. Uh, we have done, you know, moms that have adopted ch- a child, they'll do like, they call it your gotcha date on the back. Mm. We have d- some dads, I don't know where they exist, <laughs> but they are so romantic and the things they put on the back. You know, we've done happy birthday, you know, your 80th birthday to grandma. We love you, grandma. Like my own, my, my own mother-in-law. You can get that much on you. there? Yeah. So with the circle pendant, like this piece I have here. Yeah. I have my boys, three names, but we can do five oh, names on the front, five on the oh, back. You oh, can do wow. five on the front. And then we love you, grandma, on the back. So it's a very warm and fuzzy world. So over here, tiny tags. Oh, yeah. yeah I so bet. It's... But I bet you get just, uh, that's cool because- the orders that come in are all people loving other people. Yes, absolutely. You know, our, our poor friends who are attorneys and especially divorce attorneys, like their whole day is like, oh, I hope someone gets divorced today. You know, yes. <laughs> like, like, but in this, it's like, oh, I hope somebody can just have a moment to appreciate someone else today. It you really, know? it's funny because Kate, um, who works here. She's been here the longest, she's been here over five years. She's like, it's really hard not to leave here and feel such gratitude for, for life. Um, because we see, 
not only people celebrating these beautiful children, but people memorializing a situation and whether it's been a loss, you know, that they've lost their father. I mean, I had a woman DM me, her dad passed away that morning and she was looking to get a gift for her mom, her sisters, her, her children to all memorialize and celebrate their dad who had passed away. And you're just like blown away that people even come to you for such a gift that is so meaningful. So. Yeah. It's a pr privilege, right? To be absolutely, able to be a part absolutely. of that and maybe a sense of healing or a sense of gratefulness and whatnot. Um, do you, do you typically have people like I have two kids, would you put one name on the front and one name on the back or is no, it no. Or how, how I'm like, which work? kid would you put on the back? It's funny. Cause we, <laughs> we are so I'm obsessed with customer service and we see dads order <laughs> things like that. And I am like, I email them or I'll have customer service. I'm like, which kid are you going to put on the back dad? Like you well, can't put a kid I, on the back. Figure it'll flip around, right? Like it's no, not there's, really, a there's a front and there's a back. back. No, there is a front and back. Okay. Or it, I, you do two tags, one with each kid. I love doing birth times on the back. Oh yeah. You never forget what your kid's birthday, but the moment they were born, that incredible moment when your life changed forever. So I love doing birth times. Um, and then we also do, I told you, we do um, you know, anything. You could do coordinates of where you got married. So, and that's what I love. I love seeing the creativity that our customers come up with. They come up with better things than I do on what to put on our tiny tags. Right, because on the back, you can put all sorts of mysteries and magic. So are you saying that it mostly just rests on, so that the front is in the front and the back, it's not like it's sort of flopping around and everything. Yes, really correct. Cool. Yeah, there's a front okay. and there's a back, yeah. Gotcha. So you can put coordinates. At, does any, uh, any of the husbands put their own name on the front? Like, yeah. you're welcome. No, yeah, here's right. our wedding day. Um, well, sometimes <laughs> we have dads do that, and I'm like, yeah, because then it looks like you have three kids. You know, like especially oh. in a circle pendant. Well, sometimes would, it's accurate, but you don't want it to be, right? Yeah. yeah, I like the message to from a partner on the back because I feel like it is like that private message. Um, you know, like if they'll put like always you or like mm. I choose you again and again, like just really special things that are just between the two of them, which is why I love the back engraving. So interesting. That's that's really cool that there, there's like a whole level to that. I, I don't know if the interface has all that in there, but it's like, you know, sometimes most guys can be a little stupid when it comes to <laughs> figuring these things out. So um, yeah, I'm sure you sort of walk them through it. And if not, it's great to hear that you would email them and say, <laughs> FYI, don't yes. do it this way. That poor, that, that second child will never see their name on the front. Yes. So, they'll never forgive you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, and, and so, yeah. And so you just, you've created something that's, it's grown and expanded in many different tags and um and so you're, you're constantly coming up with new and different ways and different types of shapes. Is that the idea? Yeah. You know, I, it's challenging because our customers want new things. So, yeah. you know, where you want to come up with lockets, you know, because now that my kids have gotten older and I don't see them as much as I like, I, I can understand wanting to have their picture in a locket. Uh, you know, we have customers that want, you know, more bracelets. So yeah, so we're always trying to come up with different designs, but always staying true to our core of what we are. And that is doing really, what we do really, really well is personalized jewelry. Um, yeah. And with that laser engraving that gives this gorgeous, fine, elegant look. And that's great that it sounds like from a business owner perspective, it's not just a single purchase and, and you're leaving, but you're almost creating a community where they're, they're buying maybe the second for the second child, or maybe they, they're gifting it. So it's not just a single per purchase and then they're gone. You know, but you have that recurring business, perhaps. Yeah, and that's what we hope. You know, we ideally we want to be with that mom at the moment. Um, you know, she has her baby shower, so we have like a baby shower gift. Yeah. You know, we want to be a gifts to the like the mother of the bride, the the mother of the groom. You know, we do bridesmaids. Um, you know, we do godmothers. We do baptism gifts for the godmother. So. We, we want to be with that mom from every step of her journey, all those different touch points. You know, we came out last year with, um, you know, kind of like a coming of age gift for like a young girl. Oh, I always nice. have, I remember when my dad gave me a pair of like diamond earrings and have that moment where dad gives his daughter a tiny tags and on the back, mm. he can write, I love you. We're like dream big. Um, so, you know, creating these really beautiful moments and celebrating them with the tiny tags is what we would love. Yeah. And you're a part of that, that whole experience. That's really cool. Um, 
take me back in time. Take me back in time to little Melissa days. Who are you? Tell, did you, did you know you're going to be an inventor and, and a business leader and creating all these moments? What was it like growing up you? So I'm not surprised because my dad, I'm very much like my father. He was okay. a very passionate entrepreneur, very successful entrepreneur. So I definitely grew up watching um, what it meant to him. And I definitely felt like it was in my blood. I never thought I'd wind up in jewelry, to be honest. I used to be yeah. a CPA and then I went to software audits. So I thought maybe I'd start a consulting business. And I sort of fell into the jewelry world, um, but I'm not surprised in the sense that I am in the space of connecting with other women and mothers. I always say, I'm here, I'm going to try not to cry, but you know, I grew up with my dad so, and my mother did the best she could to show up. So I don't think it hit me when I was in a mentor group one time that it wasn't an accident that I wound up celebrating children and connecting with other mothers when I missed a little bit of that in my life. 100%. And I was like, oh my gosh, is it that? Did that really happen? But I, I, and who knows, but I definitely don't think it is an accident that my passion has been really connecting with other women and mothers telling their stories. You know, and as I've grown with the business, you know, we've been talking a lot about wanting our mothers, especially what they've gone through for COVID, is celebrating them and not in this, you know, selfie sort of way, but that yeah. how can we be part of helping our moms and supporting them as I'm in that same journey of loving themselves, knowing who they are, connecting with yourself, because that is how you truly show up for your child. You know, we use this tagline of celebrating a mother's most precious gift. And when I first started the business, to me, that meant like, oh my gosh, look at Tyler. I love him so much. I wear his name. And now it's deeper than that because now I realize for me to really show up and celebrate my son and acknowledge him and meet him where he is in his journey of life, I have to do that for myself. So through Instagram lives, through the communication that we do with our customers and hopefully soon to be more in person, we always want to be helping our community and, and myself, you know, recognize what you bring to the table as a parent, right? So that, you know, my mother passed away from alcoholism and I share that because I refuse to let the shame that she went through with that be carried forward. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to help all of us and myself too, talk about those things we bring forward as we parent our children, because if you don't deal with them, you tend to just keep repeating them. Um, so it's gotten, and I always say like, I couldn't have workshopped that 15 years ago when this business started that, and that's, you know, part of the slow growth of the business and why I'm so glad we have gone slow because all of that has happened over time. And I couldn't have made that happen faster because so much of what we are today as a business, who I am as a leader, as, as a community member is the stories I've heard from our customers, the relationships I've built, the impact they have had for me. Like our office is surrounded by, we do our story behind the tags where we see a tag and we email the mom and we're like, you know, what is the story behind this? Why mm -hmm. did you do this? What was the meaning? And they have shared such heartfelt, such intimate stories with us, with our community, not for any reason other than to pay it forward, to help another mother in her journey, to say, you know what, I went through postpartum and I got help. Um, you know, we have this one mom, she lived in Australia and she lost her eight month old to a very rare chromosome disorder. And she fought like hell to get genetic testing done in Australia and got laws passed. And she shared that story so that another mother would make sure she got genetic testing if she had this chromosome. We've had mothers share stories of giving a child up for adoption because she thought that was oh. the best way she could love her child. Oh. Um, and it blows my mind that they're willing to do that, which is why, like, as I've grown with the business, you know, sharing my own story, sharing the story of my mother um, is a way because when I shared on social about my mother and dying of alcoholism and how alcoholism has affected so much of my family, um, I couldn't believe the response. And I was like, mm. how are we not talking about this more? Um, because there's obviously such a need for it. So 
that was a long answer to a short question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, though, right? Just to think back on your experiences and how they and it even circles back around to the very beginning. And the thought I had was um, this whole idea of what is it? What does it mean? I have two kids. What does it mean to acknowledge them and to love them? And, you know, and one outward sign might be the wearing their name, but then, then also, I think you've made the connection that it's also being at the game, right? So yeah. it's this, it's this full picture. It's, it's everything um, that is really what you, I would have wanted. Like, I want them to be at that game or, or to, to, to even know my name and all these different things. Um, and it, isn't it wild that, that sometimes these, these wounds, like, you, you can either let them just annoy the heck out of you and right. drive you to your own, you know, vices that, um, that can be a struggle, or you can direct them at building a company and being a little crazy, but crazy in business. And, and yeah. then it, it, it can turn it around to your point, ending the shame, ending that, that progression from generation to generation saying, Nope, stops here. In fact, I'm going to use that anger and hurt and pain to like, just make everyone else's lives better or, or just connecting them to each other, you know? And I think having this and to at least be having the conversation, you know, when you said that it made me think of my neighbor who, um, her son came out that he was gay and she shared her story with us. And he, first she said, no, it's not my story to tell. And then her son got wind of it. And he said, no, mom, I want you to tell the story. And I, she grew up, you know, Catholic. And the fact that she was able to, uh, to have the, um, the awareness and the love to meet her child where he was, that like, that's not easy, you know, especially, I mean, I know people that, you know, you grew up that that's not something our family, you know, we don't have people that are gay in our family. Mm. Um, and so how we as a brand, like her sharing her story, other moms read that and were like, wow, like I need to meet my child and accepting our children because so much I think of the world we can live in now is what we want our children to be. I, and I love the quote about children are not things for us to mold, but to unfold. Mm. Um, and sometimes we're not even aware that we're doing that, that we're trying to mold them into this, you know, child that we want them to be versus recognizing who they are. So, right. What um, sport they play. Exactly. Do they do ballet or dance or this other thing? Or what is, what is it inside that fold? If we open them up, is there something there? And I, you know, I guess that reminds me of another thought um, with you is that it's not like you came out of school going like, I know what I'm going to do. Like you went into yes. like accounting <laughs> and, and finance <laughs> and auditing. Like, yes. How, how did you? did something click for you? Did you, how do you go from something? So I'm, I'm not going to, not boring, but something so. Oh, no, it was boring. I was very bad. Was it boring? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So maybe you, that you weren't supposed to be there, but like then eventually you went and you went in that the direction where now you're where you need to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm going to answer that. But the, the, the last thing I wanted to say about um, I thought to kind of bring this full circle yeah. is you know, how you parent is so much and is so much about, right, what we bring to the table. Yeah. And I have, was reading this article, um, it was about fear-based parenting. And I feel like this is why I love what we do here so much is because we're having the conversation, you know, we do IG lives, we, uh, we talk to authors and we talk to parenting experts because like the more you know, kind of the better decisions you can make. And not that we're all going to be perfect, but at least we're having the conversation. And I think I, I want to make sure that Tiny Tags is not being like, this is what you do. This is what you do. Um, but we just want to be having the conversation. Yeah, that's it. Um, anyway, but I think the way I got from being a CPA to where I am today is I, I loved accounting in the sense I loved that it was the business, the language of business. Yeah. And I loved kind of all the pieces that went with that. I think when I got into the practical world and was at um, Price Waterhouse Coopers, sitting in a cube doing an audit and tax returns, realized that wasn't for me. Um, mm -hmm. I then moved to Oracle and did software audits, which sounds really boring, but it was actually a really fun job. And then I had Tyler. And again, I never thought I'd quit my job. 
but I did and then fell into this. Yeah, it, it's amazing how, you know, folks that don't yet have kids, um, you know, it may be that next job, it may be that next car or thing you get, but then you have kids, you're like, whoa, this is like a different level of, yeah. of love. And, and then it even brings up the idea of, you know, teaching people the unconditional love and, and trying to raise them that way. And to your the point about the, you know, the, the gay son, it's like, no, it's, it's unconditional. Like, I'm going to love you no matter what. And not, not every, all of us grew up that way. Right? right. So it's almost like we grew up in a way where, no, there, you, the, the molding, there are conditions for my love is this and that um, to the point where the, the new model might be, no, 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 there, there are no conditions. You are loved. You're accepted no matter what. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. You're amazing. Where can people get in touch with you? How can they connect with you professionally? How can they, you know, throw out the websites, social platforms for sure, the mat, for sure. tiny tags, all that. Sure. So um, the tiny tags website is tinytags.com, And that is our Instagram as well. Tiny tags and my personal Instagram, which I'm trying to do a better job at. I don't remember. Hold on. I'm going to look. It is. Melissa R. Clayton. I'm not sure what the R stands for. <laughs> oh, really? It's not even your middle name? Nope. Oh, that's funny. Um, that's like a, now you've got a personality. So, yo, if anyone calls you like R. Clayton, then you'll know that they're, they got your information. Maybe I you. stole my husband's middle name is Ridge. Maybe I stole that. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, <laughs> and then the Matt's website is themat.com okay. and the Instagram for the Matt is at the Matt official. So oh, I love it. This, this has been great. Now, we I feel like we just scratched that. I feel like I could talk to you for days. So it's good that, that you know, we're going to put this first episode in, in the bank. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on here, sharing your story, your feelings, your experience in the Shark Tank, all of that. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I love, um, it's always a gift to be able to share your my story or anyone's story, I think, because that, that's how we all learn and connect. So happy to be here and thank you. Absolutely. That is exactly how we do it. And with that in mind, for those listening, if you learned something today, and I freaking know you did, because I literally have notes for days over here, <laughs> then share this with someone else. That is how you show thought leadership. Uh, share this with your teams, share this with loved ones. Uh, certainly check out Tiny Tags, the mat. Um, that'd be great for travel, I think. Um, but either way, share this yeah. stuff with everyone else. And um, and then again, Melissa, thank you so much for being on here. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. This has been another exciting episode of Leadership in Action. We will see you all next time. Leadership in Action is sponsored by the Boston Chapter of the Entrepreneurs Organization. As the world's only peer-to-peer -peer network exclusively for entrepreneurs, EO helps transform the lives of those who transform the world.